Hello everybody, this is Dr. Sergei Sargasov, and today I wanted to do a little bit more with complex numbers. Okay, first of all, a little introduction. What are complex numbers? Well, uh, we know uh, numbers um, that are, let's say, the whole numbers, right? In fact, before that, the natural numbers, let's, the set of natural numbers n being the set um, starting with 1 and then going to 2, 3, Four and so on, right? These are the counting or natural numbers. Next, we find ourselves dealing with whole numbers, a lot of times written with this W, kind of bolded W. And this is almost like the natural numbers, but it includes the number zero, okay? And you see, as we progress, the numbers are more and more involved or have more uh, elements in the set. Okay, so the whole numbers and what happens after? Well, if you go positive natural numbers, the zero and the ne negative of those, like if you're losing, right, for example, or in debt, you get the whole set of integers. And this is uh, with a Z standing for the German word Zentrum. So these are basically, you know, you have zero and then plus or minus one, or plus or minus two. You go on the number line, the real number line, you would go right, one, two, three, or left, one, two, three. So the left direction is negative. And so plus or minus three, and so on and so forth, right? These are the integers. And then we get numbers uh, that are basically, uh, we're dividing integers. We have quotients, right, of integers, and these are called the rational numbers. And these are basically, the way to represent it would be division of m over n, right? Like two integers dividing those, uh, where m and n are in the set of integers, okay? And of course, we cannot divide by zero. N is not equal to zero also, okay? That's one way to depict them, okay? Also, what numbers are after that? Well, these are rational numbers, right? And what numbers are not rational? These will be irrational numbers. Let's say the complement of this, of this uh, set. In fact, reals minus, basically, um, the, the rational numbers will be the irrational numbers. And these are numbers that basically um, I will say irrational numbers, okay? Irrational numbers where we have maybe such as, let's see, square root of 2 is a common one, right? So let's do this. Let me delete that. Like uh, such as, here's a set. I'm just going to make up some new, like for example, negative root 7, right? And um, maybe square root of 2. And then square root of 3, right? What about square root of 4? Well, that's a 2. 2 over 1, but that's not an irrational number, that's a rational number. And we go on and on. We can also do, for example, E, Euler's number. We can do pi, right? And one way to think about an irrational number, an irrational number is, uh, let's go on and on and on. An irrational number is um, what? It's when you have, it's when you have a continuum of decimals, let's say. You go, you know, point and then you go on and on with the digits, but you can never really predict, you know, infinitely amount many uh, of those digits. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You can go step by step, inductively finding the next digit, approximating, but you will never have a pattern that is deciphering uh, exactly what's happening, like a repetition, because that way, if you do, you actually do eventually get a rational number, turns out. It's interesting, right? Uh, I would recommend look at looking into 1 over 7, for example. Okay? And you'll see how the digits of the decimal actually start repeating themselves. So actually just divide 1 by 7 and you will see what happens. Actually, yes, do that and you'll, that's an exercise I recommend to, for you to try. So these are irrational numbers and when you put together the Q and the irrational, um, we can get the real numbers. Okay, real numbers. And these are all numbers basically that we can think of sometimes, usually. Uh, the numbers that make sense, I call them the calculator numbers. Anything in the calculator that's given to you, you take a square root of 2, you take 5 over 7, and you get something, and you can see that it's a, a, a real number. Uh, I would say one more thing is that if you get error in the calculator, then that's when it's not a ra real number. For example, square, square root of a negative number, right? Or division by 0. Well, you may wonder, hold up, what about square root of negative? I heard of that. Yes, square root of negative, that's called, that's an imaginary number. So then we can say like imaginary, maybe imaginary, like I for imaginary. Um, imaginary. And this is, by the way, the real numbers are basically irrational and not rational, right? Irrational. OK. 
Okay, so that's that. That's that set. Now imaginary numbers are what? That's when you have square root of negative. Square root of negative, and this is basically uh, you have an i for Im imaginary. So, for example, square root of negative one is actually definition of that, or i is definition of i as a square root of negative one. But you can have you know square root of negative four, which is two i, right? Because you take out the negative and you have square root of four, which is two. So these are sets basically of all the numbers with an i, right? So let's say we have a negative 3i, a negative 1 half i, okay? You may have square root of 5i. You may have a square root of a negative 27, for example, all kinds of things, right? And so these are all, um, you know, maybe a, a 10, 10i, 10 okay? All those are just examples of imaginary numbers. And when you put together uh, combinations of real and imaginary numbers, you get basically all the numbers we can think of. And this is very interesting as to why that's the case, but putting together the real and imaginary and combinations of these, you will get uh, complex, the, the topic for today, complex numbers. Complex numbers. And this is basically what? This is when you have uh, the set of a real number plus an imaginary number, bi, where a and b are real, but then you have the i to make that imaginary right there. And keep in mind, you may have just that this is zero, and then you have just imaginary, that's still complex. Or maybe this is zero, and so you just have the, the real, and that's also complex. So any number we're gonna talk about is really gonna be a complex number. If nothing else, we know, oh, this number is, oh, it's complex. It may not be real, it may not be imaginary, it may not be rational, but it will be complex. And so we have where A and B are the real components, okay? And I is the square root of negative, is equal to the square root of negative one by definition, okay? And so this is the set of complex numbers. So what can we do with these complex numbers, right? Like, what's the point of all that? Why am I wasting my time, our time doing this? Well, it's really cool. For example, there's a lot of things you can do. And by the way, when you invent the set of complex numbers and start working with it, that's a lot of things in mathematics. You just kind of, oh, it doesn't make sense. Let me make sense of it. You start inventing some kind of topic, some, some hypotheses, some postulates, and start working with those. And if they make some sense, you develop a lot of tools that will help you in the long run. Complex number theory is very potent. It's very powerful for helping and solve a lot of problems that seem like, oh, it's just a real world. Well, complex imaginary stuff turns out to be really helpful and even apl applications in, any th in many things. Um, physics, chemistry, all those uh, topics that will include at, at a higher level complex number theory. So let me do this. Let's um, add uh, two, um, two complex numbers. So let's say we have, let me give you complex numbers. Usually sometimes Z would be like a Z1. Instead of saying x, you know, variable x, you can use z for complex numbers. A lot of times you'll be doing that. So z1, first complex number, maybe 3 um, plus 4i. And maybe z2 will be something like, let's try a, uh, let's try a 5 um, minus a 5i, for example, right? Or even, let's do this, minus a 12i, for example. So let's do something kind of like that, okay? And now... You may wonder, okay, well, and so what, right? Let me see if this is a better, best way to go about this. Let's see. Um, let's try. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so adding the numbers, what happens? What's Z1 plus Z2? Well, you do the real component addition, and you do the imaginary component addition. So basically, it's going to be 3 plus 5, okay, plus 4, the minus the 12, right? And then I, and then you have 8 minus, what is that, 8I, right? And that's what it is. That's the addition of the numbers. And subtraction works similarly, okay? Z1 minus, uh, Z, let's do Z, let's do Z2 minus Z1, okay? So Z2 minus Z1 would be 5 minus 12i, that's Z2, minus the 3 plus a 4i, that's Z1, right? And that's going to be, you do the real part, so 5 minus the 3, and you do the, you know, plus and then a negative 12i, that's what it was, and then minus a 4i, right? And so you actually get, end up with, what is that, a 2, and then I'm getting minus, and you see we're getting minus 16i. So that's how you would subtract complex numbers. Now, multiplying and dividing is a little trickier, but let's do that. It's really cool, actually. So let's do z1 times z2, okay? And so z1 times z2, what was that again? It was um, 3 plus 4i, okay, times 5 minus a 12i. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. So 
you'll see like we're wondering well what is this is this also a complex number and the answer is yes and you'll see what I mean by that so let's do this let's just do the foil method first outer inner last or I as I usually say multiply everything possible on the left side by everything possible and basically the other expression on the right side so you would do this that this and that and then combine add them all up basically right so sum up all the products possible right so 3 times 5 15 3 times a negative 12 I is a minus 36 I uh, 4 I times 5 plus a 20 I and then finally look plus a 4 I the, uh, the last terms times a negative 12 I you know what that is gonna be let's see that's equal to equal to 15 those in the middle are gonna be negative 16 I right negative 36 plus a uh, 20 I that's that and then what is a 4 times a negative 12? It's a minus 48 i squared. And i squared, the square root of negative 1 squared, the square root goes away, and you get negative 1. So really, this is equal to, look, 15 minus an, a 16i, uh, and then minus 48 times just a negative 1. That's what this is. And what's a negative 48, negative 1? That's a plus 48. So this is 48 plus uh, 15 plus a 48, put the real terms together, minus a 16i. And what is that? That's going to equal to uh, 63, I'm getting, minus 16i. And hopefully that's correct. There are other ways to check if that's correct, by the way. Okay. And then finally, division is a little bit even more involved. Let's divide z2 by z1. I mean, by uh, z2, z1 by z2, for example. Or, you know, maybe easier would be divide. Let's do divide z2 by z1, just a little bit easier computationally. And so this will happen to be, what did we have? We had 5 minus a 12i, right? divided by um, 3 plus 4i. And then what happens is to get rid of a square root, by the way, remember, this is like a square root, and it's at the bottom. So you want to simplify the radical, right? You want to multiply this by a conjugate to get rid of the square root in, under, in the bottom. So what you're going to do is instead of 3 plus 4i, you multiply the bottom by 3 minus 4i. And we'll see the difference of squares helps get rid of the square root stuff, okay? Especially square root of a negative number. On the top, also the same thing, to keep it fair, to both top and bottom, to not really change the number, right? This is just like nothing is there. So that's why you can do that. Okay, because something over something, the same thing, is just a 1. So multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything, right? Okay, so with that, let's continue multiplying. And you see, I'm going to do this a little bit more in my head. 5 times 3, 15. Uh, 5 times negative 4i, negative 20, oops, negative 20i. And then what? Uh, negative 12i, 3, that's a minus 36i. And then negative 12 and negative 4, 48, and minus, so minus 48, as you see what, maybe you can see what I'm doing. And then at the bottom, it's what? 3 squared minus a 4 squared i squared. So that's really 3 squared plus a 4, or, you know, let me write it minus for now, 4 squared i squared. And that's actually what? 9 plus, not minus, because this is going to be making a plus, 16. So that's going to be 25. So let's actually continue with uh, 15 minus 48 is a minus 33. And then this is a minus, what, 56i on the top. I'm just doing these together here. Okay? And then what is that? That's a 9. And then minus a 16i squared is a negative 1. So you have 25 at the bottom. And you get negative, look at this, you get negative 33 over 25. That's a what? A real number. It's actually a rational also, but it's a real number. Um, this is going to be 25. Okay. And minus a 56i over 25, so minus 25, 56 25ths i. And you see this is also a complex number, right? Cool, so division, and that one is a complex. That one is a complex number, it's in the set of complex numbers. Cool, right? Okay, so, and you see how it always, more than likely, you can feel it out, how you always will have a complex number for multiplying or dividing complex numbers. And a few more things I wanna show you, okay? This is really cool material here. So let's draw, let's do the complex number, um, um, let's do this, what is it, the, the complex plane. You know how there's a rectangular coordinate system, right, where you have the x and y axes, and you have, you know, like, uh, maybe a relation between x and y, and you start plotting it and getting graphs, right? So you basically have the coordinate system, let's do that here in one second, like this. Uh, here's our, let's say, and but now look, what's going to happen is, instead of me calling it x and y, I'm going to say, hey, whatever this is, this is going to be the real part, okay, like the number, the, so, a complex number, let's say 5 plus 3i, or what do we have, 3i, 3, 3 plus 4i, that actually will be, like, you can represent it with a point, because you go 3 to the right and 4 up. So this is real of the number z, or, you know, any complex number, and this is the imaginary part 
of um, the number, the complex number. So let's look at how would, um, let me see, let's kind of do a little coloring uh, schematic here. So this can be maybe this color here, something different. Let's see, one second. Um, like this green, okay? And so let's move it a little bit down too. All right. And so let me make it neat here. Okay. So there we go. Look at this. What happens now is uh, we're going to plot Z1. That was 3 plus 4i, right? So 3 is the real part. That means you go 1, 2, 3, and uh, 4 is the imaginary part, plus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the number Z1 uh, equals to 3 plus 4i. See that? What about Z2? That was 5, so 3, 4, 5, minus 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and down one more. Uh, 12, right? So kind of a little lower here. Uh, that's going to be continue the, the imaginary axis, and so it's going to be right here, I believe, if we can really get it. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. And so look, this is a number z2, which is going to be 5 minus a 12i, if we remember, right? Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do, things, there are a lot of interesting things you can do with these numbers. For example, how far away is the number z1 from the origin? In other words, this point. This is actually called the modulus of the numbers of the number or the magnitude of the complex number. This is written as um, sometimes a double brackets, even z1 like that. And what that is, is it's the length. How far away is the three point, the point three four away from zero zero? By the distance formula, the square root of three squared plus four squared, right? It's going to be square root of 25 is five. It's five. And then if you do the five negative 12, you know why I chose that? Because you know what this length is going to be? It's going to be 13. There's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Okay, so let me just squiggle it a little bit so you can understand that this, this is magnitude Z2. If you're going to do the square root of 5 squared and 12 squared, you're going to get 13. Square root of 169. Cool. And then let me show you some other stuff you can do. There's a lot of trigonometrical uh, things you can do. You can think about polar coordinates. You can think about other way, things. You can find this angle. You know how to find that angle, theta? It's called theta, that angle. You can do, uh, look at this, tangent theta. If you remember tangent, it's going to be opposite over um, adjacent, so that's going to be the height, look at this, it's th 4 here over 3 there. So tangent theta is going to be 4 thirds, it's called theta 1, okay, because it's the first. And so theta 1, you can find the angle by arc tangent, or tangent inverse of 4 thirds. For example, that's what I'm talking about, this specifically this angle right there, okay. It's kind of cool, right? That's an angle, and you can find the other angle and whatnot. Let me show you some other interesting aspects. So we found that the point, look at this, the point Z1, the number uh, the point, the number can be represented as a point in the complex plane. And this was what? 3 plus 4i. And also it, it had modulus, think about it, it had modulus 5. And angle was tangent inverse of 4 thirds, okay? Which I believe is about 53 degrees, okay? Because that 3, 4, 5 triangle. So approximately 5 comma... 53 degrees ish. Okay, and so I have a calculator. You know, I can find a calculator nearby really quickly, like my phone and whatnot. But so what I'm doing here is this is if you have an R, this is like R, the called the magnitude, the modulus, or you know the radial distance. So and this is going to be called the angle, direction angle. Okay, this is a polar way of writing, a polar representation of this rectangular representation. Okay, so rectangular representation like x and y and this is going to be like the r and theta okay this is a polar this is both of these are polar okay representations okay so what's so interesting about polar representations okay i'll show you it's really cool uh rotation okay polar rectangular okay so let me get rid of the representations word okay so with that, what can we do? Well, let's look at Z2. Z2 was going to be, remember, it was, um, uh, what is it, 5 minus a 12i, which had, remember, the you could find the distance, it was a radial distance or the magnitude or, or, or modulus was 13. The angle will be tangent inverse of, now, remember, it's a negative 12 for the y. The imaginary value goes down 12, and then the adjacent would be the 5. That would be that, and that's approximately what, let me actually use a calculator, if you want to know what you can do on the phone, like let's say an iPhone with a calculator, like well, a calculator, 
with, from just an iPhone, you, you horizontal, make it horizontal, okay, the phone, and then you get these other buttons. I'm going to do 12 divided by 5, okay, push the minus button, and then I'm going to put, so, you know, negative 2.4, right, and then I'm going to push second, and the tangent button becomes tangent inverse, and I'm getting 67.4 degrees, so negative, let's say, so it's approximately 13, and then a negative 67.4. Four degrees and actually that one remember this uh, what is it the four-thirds let's see four-thirds was actually if you do tangent second tangent and uh, get tangent inverse that was 53.1 degrees if you really want to be a little bit more specific so 0.1 degrees here let's do that and get rid of the degree sign there for a second and so 0.1 degrees let's see just a little decimal extra decimal there so we know okay so let me show you what you can do with this Remember we did z1 um, times z2, and you're wondering, okay, well, that was kind of messy and involved. We actually got, look what result we got. We got 63 minus 16i. That's that's like far out there somewhere, right? Like if you, you don't want to graph that point because we don't have enough. 63, going to the right, 63 is not going to fit on this, you know, this little chart here, this little whiteboard here. But 63 minus, let's see, let me write it again, 63 minus, I think it was what, um, 16i okay it's another number by the way and let's find what this is okay let's find what this is as far as the r and theta of it okay so this is going to be the screwed of how far away it is from the origin that's 63 squared you know plus a negative 16 squared plus a negative 16 squared and that's going to be the angle is going to be look tangent inverse of uh you're going down so negative 16 and then you're going to the right 63 so opposite of our adjacent is that okay and you get this and then what is that equal to that's equal to or approximately let's say approximately but this is actually going to be i believe 65 exactly look and it should be look and i'll tell you why but 63 squared let me tell you kind of just let's slow down and you know i'm going to 63 squared is 3969 and then you're going to add 256 which is 16 squared you get 4215 take the square root of that and you get one second. It's terrible because we're not, something's wrong. One second. So I'm not getting it. Maybe a mistake somewhere. One second. So 63 squared. Okay. Plus 256, 16 squared. Okay. And then, okay, 4,225. I messed up somewhere in the, in the computation. Then the square root of that is exactly 65. So how far away is it from the origin? The multiplication of those numbers is 65. And the angle, let me see the angle about. It's a 16 negative and divided by uh, 63, okay? Tangent inverse of that. And we're going to get negative 14.3 degrees about. Negative 14.3 degrees. It says actually negative 14.2500, zero, zero, et cetera. But that's what we're getting. And now look, let me ask you a quick question. If I were to do the following, if I said, hey, Z1 times Z2, what if, like kind of a question mark, I'm just going to leave it here. I, I, I'm going to go too far, much further. I'm going to leave this lecture here. It's kind of, I know it's already some time in it. But what if you were to do this? You would say, hey, I'm going to multiply the first modulus by the second modulus. Like, the remember, we had a 5 and a 13. Why not multiply these? And there's, of course, an interesting way to show that. It takes trigonometry and law of um, uh, the sum and difference of angle formulas and trigonometry to prove this. Okay. But... But we can do this, and you multiply R1 times R2, and again, check this. Let's see, like, go into that in depth and, like, maybe learn a little bit more. I just want to give you a little insight and a little thing before we kind of finish our lecture today. So R1, R2, and guess what? Why don't we add up theta 1 plus theta 2? It's kind of more like a De Morov's theorem. So this has to do with um, this French mathematician, uh, De Morov's, and so his theorem is a really cool theorem. Look into this, okay? really awesome theorem and so what happens is when you multiply numbers that are complex by the way those are vectors think about that they have a direction and an angle uh, for an angle and they also have how long the magnitude right so if you have two vectors and you're multiplying them whatever it means uh, like complex numbers you're multiplying them right you get something and we're look at this you get isn't that true that this was 5 times 13 that was 65 and what about the angles like what do we have uh 53.1 degrees okay 53 so this is multiplying these, and what's 53.1 degrees? We're going to check. Minus the 67.4 degrees, because it was a negative, right? It's going to be equal to exactly, look, 65, right? And then this is what? A negative 14.3. Cool, right? This is exactly, look, here 
and here. That's the same thing, regardless of which way we did it. Now, think about it. The second way, the last thing I just did, isn't that much faster? So even further, let me kind of, this is so cool, right? That we want to maybe look at some other thing here. What if we do this? Try, let's do this. Let me show you how you can do a few things with this. Let's say I was wondering, hey, I want to multiply. Let's do this. I have like some kind of weird number like this. Um, one minus the square root of three, okay, I. Okay, that's, that's tough, right? And then we're going to take it to the 10th power, all right? You know what that means? I'm multiplying itself, by itself, by itself, 10 times. What, is, what in the world is that equal to? Okay, FOIL method, binomial theorem, eh, even binomial theorem, it still takes some time. So you know what we're going to do? Watch this. I'm going to actually treat this as a complex number. It is a complex number, z, which is, again, 1 minus a root 3i. But also, it's modulus. I wanted you to check this, okay? It's going to be, what's 1 plus the square root of 3 squared? 1 plus 3 is 4. Square root of that is a 2. The length is 2. And the angle, if you look at that, what's, what's tangent inverse of a negative uh, root 3 over 1, right? And that's going to be a negative 60 degrees, right? Negative 60 degrees. So, okay. And you can actually draw that. You'll see it's a negative 60 degrees. You can plot that point. Go right 1 and down uh, root 3. Okay, so this is going to be uh, exactly 2 comma negative 60 degrees. All right. Now, if I'm taking it to the 10th power, right, z to the 10th power, guess what happens? I can, what did I tell you last time? What if we multiply the, mo the moduli, the radii, the r, basically, the radial distances, so by themselves, and we add up the angles? So in other words, it's z times z times z a lot of times, right? 10 times. And this is going to be 2 comma negative 60 degrees in the polar representation, and then times... 2 minus 60 degrees, polar coordination, I mean, negative 60 degrees, and you do that multiple, many times, 10 times, guess what happens? You multiply the 2 by itself 10 times, and you add up the angle, negative 60 degrees, 10 times. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to be 2 to the 10th power, right? And then comma, negative 60 uh, times, because you're adding it 10 times, so times a 10, not to the 10th power, that's going to be 1024, bear with me, that's what the 2 to the 10th power is. And this is going to be negative 600 degrees, right? Well, you know what that is? That number, if you go, if you have a magnitude of uh, something, let's say you have, look, by the way, negative 600 degrees is also, what's that uh, coterminal angle? It's 120 degrees, right? Add 360 twice. So if you go, look, let me show you. If you draw a little uh, kind of, um, rectangular coordinate system with a polar plane. And look at this, negative 600 degrees, negative 90, 180, 270, 360, 450, negative 540, and negative 600. That's right there where we have uh, 120 degrees right here. Okay, that's 120 degrees. That's a negative 600 degrees, the same thing. Okay, um, and so right there, and it's going out 1,024, right? To find the actual X value, because remember, this is a real, this is imaginary. So the real part is going to be the R cosine, okay, the adjacent side, cosine theta. So R cosine theta, the R cosine theta is equal to 1024 cosine of 120 degrees, which is a negative one half, so negative 512, half of the 1024. I know I'm going quickly here, but look over this a little bit. You'll feel it out, okay? R sine theta, okay, and that's going to be the X value for our complex number y value, the vertical, is going to be r sine theta equals to 1024 cosine of the, you can even do the negative 600 degrees, it doesn't matter, and you get, it's like just a 120, oh, sine, sorry, sine of that, right? Root 3 over 2, positive, think about it, because it's up, right? It's right here, the quadrant 2, and so you have um, a 512 root 3, okay? And you know what our z to the 10th power is? In other words, you know what this um, 1, so, basically, 1 minus a root 3i, okay, to the 10th power, it will have to be, or is, okay, a negative 512 plus a 512 root 3i, okay, that's an i, because this is an imaginary part, wow, right, that was a quick way, or at least, and a beautiful and a very tricky, unique way, maybe, to, to decipher what would be this number, if, and it is actually a complex number, and it's this, Cool, right? All right. Uh, let's end this uh, lesson for today. You have a wonderful day, everybody.